Well, good morning and welcome to the Rector's Reflections. I hope you're enjoying this newsletter that's uh, coming to you. And just to, to highlight for you, uh, a few days ago we celebrated Juneteenth and in a few weeks we're going to celebrate July the 4th. But I just want to kick off by reminding us of that amazing verse from Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Do not be yoked anymore with the yoke of slavery. There's so many times in our lives that we have been freed by Jesus, yet we continue to live not as sons and daughters, but as slaves. Jesus has set us free and we're not supposed to live in that mentality. In Galatians chapter five, uh, Paul tells us how we are supposed to not satisfy the desires of our flesh, but to live and walk and step with the Spirit and show the fruit of the Spirit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. These are such amazing things. That's what true freedom is all about. So in these next few weeks, as you think about our nation celebrating freedom, uh, I hope that takes on a deeper meaning than just uh, physical or political freedom, but there's a, a deep spiritual freedom that Jesus has won for us on the cross. St. Paul, in his book to the Romans, actually uses a variety of different, uh, if you will, images or um, metaphors for what Jesus accomplishes on the cross. One, he uses the metaphor of a temple. In other words, Jesus is the, the true uh, spotless lamb who is sacrificed for us. And that's the idea of propitiation is the technical term. There's another picture that we get, which is the idea of a courtroom of justification where a judge declares us righteous. And you'll see that as you continue reading Galatians and Romans. Another one that you see is the word adoption. That's also a, a courtroom picture. That's the picture in which a judge declares you to be a child of your adopted father with all the rights and privileges and responsibilities that that entails. And then lastly, Paul gives us another picture. It's the picture of a marketplace. What do I mean by that? I remember about 20 years ago, I was going to visit my family who were living in Spain at that time. I was stationed in upstate New York at Fort Drum. And what did I do? I drove my car down to a friend in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, parked it on the, their street, not realizing that it was a blizzard uh, throughway. Uh, and I drove, my friend drove me to Newark, New Jersey. I flew out to Spain, returned two weeks later to discover that my car had been impounded. When I arrived at the impound, what I discovered was that I had to pay to get my car back. And when I got my car back, the manager of the pound lot had stamped on it, redeemed. The picture of marketplace that we have is that of a slave being redeemed by Jesus. That is the picture that Paul gives us. We have been redeemed by Jesus from hell, death, and the grave. May this Juneteenth, may this July the 4th, take on a whole new meaning of what independence and dependence on God means. So thank you for listening to my reflections uh, as your rector. Hope you enjoy. And if you're not with us personally as a snowbird, we hope that you continue to stay connected with us um, on these reflections throughout the upcoming weeks. God bless and have a great rest of your day.